As the second anniversary of the bailouts of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are on the horizon, we are joined now by former Fannie Mae chief credit officer and Bloomberg guest op-ed contributor Edward Pinto to talk about his recent published piece about affordable housing and the nation's mortgage meltdown. Ed, great to have you here with us. Uh, I love your column today, and you basically say subprime 2.0 is coming uh, soon to a suburb near you, near me, near everyone. Why do you say this? Uh, I say that because uh, we have a replay of exactly what happened in 1992 when Congress uh, passed the uh, act that was supposed to protect us from Fannie and Freddie ever going bankrupt, and 15 years later uh, they uh, were uh, wards of the state and bailed out. What we have now is a financial reform bill where Congress refused to put in something as minimal as requiring a prudent underwriting standard for mortgages, uh, requiring a, a minimal down payment of 5%. Uh, requiring a reasonable credit score. And so the fact that they refuse to do these things, I think, is just an indication that, and Barney Frank said it famously a number of years ago, when it comes to uh, subsidized housing and affordable lending, he'd just rather roll the dice. Now, Ed, as you know, there's a lot of finger pointing that's been going on in terms of uh, the aftermath of the financial crisis. Who is responsible? Seems like there's an awful lot of blame to go around. Are you saying that nothing's being done again uh, in terms of dealing with Fannie and Freddie and lending standards specifically, that that could lead to another crisis? crisis here? Absolutely. Um, what, uh, what we have is uh, a series of uh, policy decisions that have been made since the crisis. Uh, the first was uh, to expand and extend uh, Fannie and Freddie's affordable housing goals, which is what got them into trouble in the first place. Uh, and the, uh, their regulator just uh, finalized those goals just last week. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, as I said, financial reform where very simple uh, uh, standards were uh, proposed and it was uh, uh, defeated on the floor of the Senate. But Ed, let me uh, ask you, have... because in terms of how this has been playing out, is there any political will to improve those lending standards? As you know, it seemed to be a policy coming out of D.C. that everybody should have the right to own a home. Affordable housing was a big push. Any move or any political will to change that? Uh, I, not uh, with the current Congress. I think we're going to have to see what uh, happens as uh, things move forward through the election. But at this point, there's a stalemate, and that's another uh, problem that we're facing. Mm -hmm. uh, Fannie and Freddie can continue uninterrupted uh, for many, many years. Uh, back in uh, December, the administration, in the, what's known as the Christmas Eve surprise, uh, basically extended and expanded the bailout of Fannie and Freddie. And that bailout can continue at the tune of uh, hundreds of billions of dollars post 2012 and so therefore there's really no incentive on the part of the administration to actually fix Fannie and Freddie right. if they like what they see they can keep it your proposal though for a fix and I love this Ed and you say it has to do with tying this to congressional pensions tell me your thoughts here well, I mean, you say the lack of political will, and my suggestion is if uh, you want to put some uh, spine in uh, some of these politicians, uh, put, their, uh, put the loans that they think are so great, uh, these uh, uh, low down payment, uh, high, uh, low FICO, uh, all the other flexibilities that they seem to love, uh, back their pension plans with these loans, and that's where their pensions come from, and I think you'd mm. see very quickly that they would immediately change these policies. All right, we'll see whether that happens, uh, but it's definitely a great read. Ed, thank you so much. Edward Pinto joining us. Appreciate it. Definitely Thank check you very out. much. Pleasure check to be here.